Welcome back to my Pokemon Diamond Mono Ice type run, episode number 14. I'm Circle Cat Zack, and in this episode, we are going to continue on through what I believe to be Route 210. And we're looking pretty good on our team. I might switch uh, Nessie to the front just because it is a level lower. And uh, I don't think it matters anyway, because we have probably some more double battles coming up. But right here, we have a single battle right in front of a uh, an item. So let's go ahead and battle this guy. Uh, I haven't recorded the last few days. I wanted the last part to get some views. It didn't get very many views at all, which was kind of annoying. And on the last two videos, I hadn't gotten any comments until uh, just recently. And that was the same person trying to make me feel better anyway. So uh, thank you to that person. They know who they are. But uh, anyway, I hope this video gets sort of a better response. I... I wish you guys would tell me uh, what I could do to make the content better for you guys or to make you want to like it or comment some more or watch my videos even some more. But for now, we, we just have to take on this really annoying Happini, and thankfully we broke out of uh, confusion there. And we're going to get a lot of experience because that whole Happini Blissey Chansey line, or Happini Chansey Blissey, gives you a ton of experience and that'll get us to the level. So we get a great ball here, that's actually pretty nice at this stage of the game. And we have just another normal single battle here. And this might be a long one because this is a breeder. And breeders tend to have lots of Pokemon. And three, I guess is a lot. It's a it's a fair amount to be sure. But Nessie is going to make short work, hopefully most of them with Water Pulse because it is Stab. I wonder if, if, she, I wonder if she's going to have a Clefable too because she had Cleffa and Clefairy. And now she's going to have Happini. Interesting. So... That just means more experience for us. I'm gonna go for that water pulse, and that will do almost enough. But thankfully, it goes for the water pulse. But we get confused. Great. Uh, thankfully, we break through it with an ice shard that uh, didn't really matter because we would have gone first anyway. But I'm just glad we broke out of confusion. So let's go back down here. I'm not sure I've cleared everything out of this route yet, and we haven't, of course. We have another double battle. Ho 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 ho! I'll show y'all how tightly I've bonded with my daughter. I can't get away with slacking off if I have my Pokemon out. Uh, I don't know how you came up with that logic, but uh, good for you. Anyway, we have Belle and Paul. Uh, really, really pick names for those trainers, but uh, well, let's go for a Water Pulse on... Hmm, on Stonke. And then we'll just go for the Icy Wind because it hits both of them. That will not do enough to take out Glamiel. And did it miss Stunky or what? I think it might have missed Stunky. But uh, anyway, the Water Pulse is going to take it out. So now I'll just go for the Water Pulse and maybe an Ice Fang. And of course, Circle Cat would get the Quick Claw right then. That's pretty funny. And that is going to be it for Belle and Paul. Oh, sheesh. Oh, sheesh yourself. So, I don't know. Joggers don't usually battle you. I don't know why they even included Joggers. They don't do much. So here is a pretty useful trainer uh, because they give you a TM and it's going to be Roost, I believe, because she mentioned the word Roost. Let's go ahead and check that. No, I'm pretty sure. Yep, TM51 Roost. Uh, your Pokemon lands on the ground, but they heal up uh, half their HP. So it's really useful unless they use something like Earthquake. If you're a flying type, then you kind of get wrecked. But I'm going to go into Salesian Town just to heal up. We don't really need it, but I'm just going to... Go in and make sure that we're okay, maybe go to the Pokemon Mart, and then we will continue on through Route 210, and maybe even to a new route, I'm not sure. We will see. So, we are back outside, and I actually went to the Pokemon Mart as well. I keep calling it that, but it's the Pokemon Mart. And I bought a few things. I bought a few repels. I bought like 10 repels, just so if we ran into anything else, uh, we wouldn't actually run into anything else what am I saying uh, so we won't run into anything else I bought a few potions because we had enough super potions but we were a little lacking in potions and I bought a few just random balls like dust balls net balls and something else there are Psyduck up there in the top left corner that we just passed by we can't get up there yet somebody will help us with that later on so we cannot access that area yet but we will later uh, this is a cafe style thing that has a few trainers in it and you can also buy Moo Moo Milk which is actually not a bad deal um, in some games there's a lot of games where you can buy Moo Moo Milk 
Uh, Moo Moo Milk is actually a pretty good deal in this game too. For five hundred dollars, uh, Poke Dollars, you get one Moo Moo Milk, which heals a hundred HP. So it's twice as effective as the Super Potion, and it's very very cost effective. The only drawback is that you have to keep clicking the A button to buy the Moo Moo Milk. So you can't just be like, oh, okay, I'll have eighty all at the same time. You have to keep doing what I'm doing is A stalling and B keep clicking A until you have as many Moo Moo Milks as you want and I think however many I just got is what I'll stick with. So you can probably tell by the music there that we have another trainer battle. This one is going to be against a waitress of some time, Katie with an I. I don't think I've ever seen that spelling on a person in real life, K-A-T-I. So follow me is a really useless move when you're the only person in a battle, Clefairy. I don't know what you're doing. Um, by the way, if you couldn't tell, I'm recording at night. Uh, if you couldn't tell by the uh, outside how it's a lot more dark, and that's because I actually have my computer clock set correctly and the game runs off of that, so it is nighttime. And so if my commentary sounds different at all, I don't know how it would sound different, but if it sounds different at all, it's because I'm recording it at night and not in the afternoon like I usually do. So we have some pseudo widows here. They are not a problem at all because we have water pulse. And I think after this battle, because Nessie just grew to level 30, I will switch it over to Circle Cat so he can get some screen time. And we will be good to go. Collector Edwin. I'm assuming that other collector is going to want to battle us, so I will go ahead and switch Circle Cat to the front. And I want to give Nessie an item, because it sort of bothers me that Nessie doesn't have an item. So, out of what we have, I think... I think, what would be a good item? A lucky egg might be good if we had one. Do we have a lucky egg? We had an oval stone, that's what threw me off. That looked like a lucky egg. Uh, experience share, I don't really want. That would just throw everything off. I want to give it some kind of berry, I think. Let's give it a... If we have a person berry, might be nice. I think we'll go with a person berry. Because those are incredibly handy. So Personberry, that was my last one, but it's going for a good cause. And it is a collector. Not all collectors look like that. I am one of them, and I do not look like that, I can tell you firsthand. But uh, I'm glad we switched, because Bite is going to be super effective against this Mr. Mime, and we'll take it out. And of course he has three of them, I think, like the other one. Like the other guy had three, Sid Widow. Uh, it won't take that one out, but it just went for Meditate, so that's not a problem. And because there's three of them, we are because of that, definitely going to get a level. And so they are both tied at level 30. Circle Cat is going to evolve, by the way, in 12 levels, so keep that on your radar. It's going to evolve into an awesome Glalie, which is my favorite Pokemon, which you should have known because it's on all of my icons and things. And that was Collector Fernando. Although, if I do say so myself, he does not look very much like a Fernando, but what am I to judge? And that was the last trainer because that guy is just going to talk to us about the Psyuk out there, who apparently can't move because they're suffering from chronic headaches. And if we move over here, in Route 215, it is raining. Oh, it was actually raining in Route 210. That's weird. Where was it raining? It just Did you see that? There we go. There's the rain. It's raining here in Route 215. That's what I thought. And we have another guy here, a treasure hunter. We went from collectors to treasure hunters. That's pretty funny. So this guy is going to, oh, he's actually not a treasure hunter, but even like he said he is, because he's a ruin maniac. He's going to have a bronze ore, and I really don't know what to hit this thing with. I think Icy Wind might be our best bet. Uh, that didn't do very much, except from lower, it's already really low speed. This might be a bit of a trouble. We may have to switch over to uh, Ness here, but I think I can just keep spamming Ice Fang and either get the Freeze or the... Uh, flinch, or he'll just use a useless move, or he'll just not do very much damage. Or hypnosis. I didn't see that coming. Anyway, that's why we have things like uh, awakenings, and I have four of them, and if even if I didn't have that, I have chest berries, so we are good to go for a while. Extra sensory does an uh, okay chunk of damage. I think one or two more ice fangs should take it out. We don't get the fr uh, flinch or the freeze, which is kind of stinky, but that's okay. And there we go, finally Bronzor is taken down. That was really annoying. Uh, Shield on, I think I will switch out for that one into Nessie. 
for multiple reasons because my health is down and I want to use water pulse on this thing. That will be super effective and it will make that a lot easier than uh, Bronzor was. So now I'm going to have to uh, head into my bag. I don't know why I said that with an accent, but head into my bag and get a super potion, which we have tons of. We're completely covered on that. And now we can finally move on and see what else there is to see. There's another honey tree if you're looking for places to slather honey and get rare Pokemon. Might as well get that ether and then see if this jogger wants to battle. They normally don't, but uh, I just want to check because I want all the experience I can get. I don't know why he's facing that way, but I want battles. So, I've, oh wait, apparently he's not a trainer, but we get TM66 Payback. I'm noticing that a lot of these trainers will usually say the uh, TM that they're giving you, so that's pretty handy. Uh, Payback is a pretty good TM, as this guy actually does want to battle us. Uh, Payback, if you don't know, it is a dark type move that does twice as much if it goes second and you were hit uh, by the Pokemon that went first. I think we'll go for an Ice Fang here. So I think the base power is 50, but then that bumps up to 100. Uh, oh jeez, that did a lot. Fighting type move from a partially fighting type Pokemon. Ouchies. So that uh, super potion really did nothing because now we're just going to have to go into our bag and use a couple super potions. Actually, I think I might just use a super potion and a potion. So not completely... Oops. And I just paused my game. My bad. Anyway, not completely wasting my time and money here. And I didn't want to waste a Moomoo Milk because I don't want to have to go back there and keep clicking A to get more uh, Moomoo Milks and stuff. We have some berries back here, just a couple. Uh, Petra Berries, which are very handy because they cure poison. And these might be Oron Berries? No, they're Black Berries. I can't see the color very well in the rain and the, uh, the darkness because I'm recording this pretty late at night. So there was another uh, place we could cut back there, and I want to go back and, whoops, well, we just went all the way back. That's annoying. But that's actually not too bad because it leads me pretty close to the uh, cut tree over here that we can cut down thanks to Dot. Thank you, Dot. And there's actually a trainer back here. I didn't even see this guy. I was snoozing, you claim. I'm merely feigned sleep. Hiya! So, I don't know how you can sleep in this pounding rain, but good for you that you can sleep in a big rainstorm and not catch cold or something. This might be a bit tough because this is another fighting type, but it's foreshadowing of things to come, if that gives you any hint as to what we have to deal with next. And apparently that hidden power was not something that is super effective against ice, which is really nice. And that wasn't supposed to rhyme, but oh well. Uh, we'll take out that Meditite really easily, and now we have a Machop. I think we'll switch out to Nessie, who has lots and lots of HP to deal with things like Machop. And Water Pulse will be neutrally effective and stab. So, even if we didn't take that thing out, we had a chance to get the, uh, the Confusion. And I think I'll just stay in. I think that's a lot easier than switching all the way back out. And that will get us the win. Gurgle. Ew. Why is he gurgling? That is completely disgusting. But it was somewhat worth it because we get a fist plate and we can see what the text is on the back of this plate. The power of defeated giants infuses this plate. There are all sort of silly ones like that, but they're pretty interesting, I suppose. Funny to look at, anyway. So I totally said before that I was going to put on repels so I wouldn't run into wild Pokemon. And I totally didn't put on a repel. And now it totally, yes totally, came back to bite me in the butt. So even though this uh, recording is coming near a close, as I was in the uh, medicine bag there, I'm going to put on a repel. So let's go through here and pick up this item, which is a guard spec, not something I'm going to use that is a battle item. And I did go back while I was in the Pokemart and sell all of my battle items up to that point. But we have another cut tree here, and it is going to lead us to another area. That was kind of pointless. I think, because we could have just gone down here, right? What was the point of that? Oh well. We have a trainer here. Oh, I guess if you wanted to avoid that trainer, but uh, I want to take this guy on. So he's going to have more fighting types, I presume, which is really annoying. And we're going to have to t try and take this thing on with Circle Cat. What do I want to go for? Headbutt. And that will take it out. Good, we get a crit. Excellent. So Machop, definitely going to switch out like I did before. Do Nessar. 
Nessie, go for water poles. ka -chow. I don't know why I did the Lightning McQueen thing. But, uh, that will take it out. And I just realized water type mo uh, water pulse may get a boost. I'm not sure on that. Water pulse may or may not get a boost from the rain. I cannot remember. But uh, we do get some good money from that. And is there anything over here? I'm going to put on a repel before I check. Go away. And I'm going to speed through the cutting down of this tree. There we go. If I remember to click A. And down here we have a uh, TM34 Shockwave, a very useful TM if you are uh, if you have a an electric member of your team this early on. And I keep running into that jogger, and I was trying to click on him, but I don't think he's going to battle me anyway. So we get a full heal right there, and we have a double battle right there. And down below there we have some uh, berries. So I think that's what I'll do to end the episode off: is take on these two trainers. Go get those berries. Uh, there's a sign over there that I think says something about a new area. Or we might just get to our next area. And that is where I will end the episode off. So we have a Glammeow and a Monferno. Pretty favorable matchup. I think I'll just go straight for the Ice Fang on Glammeow and straight for the Water Pulse on Monferno. Uh, it does get off a Mock Punch, but because it is a priority move, it's not going to be very powerful. And we will take it out without too much loss. It does get off a Hypnosis, but I'm not really concerned. But now he sends out a Gyarados, which is a little concerning. Um, what do I want to do here? I think I want to use Circle Cat's turn to heal up with an Awakening. And then I will use Ness's turn to take out the Glamium. So that'll give us some experience at least. There we go, Circle Cat grows a level, and we get a very useful move, Crunch. Uh, moving down to the bottom screen, I will get rid of Bite for that because Crunch is the uh, better version of Bite. Thrash is going to do not very much. Not very much at all. And now he's going to go into Kadabra, so now I know what to do. Uh, go for our new move, Crunch, on Kadabra, and I guess I will go for a Body Slam on Gyarados and see how much that does. And that will take it out easily, I'm sure, because we are 8 levels higher and that is a very powerful move. Nessie's going to grow to level 31, so we're, we are back on par. And now well, all that's left is to take on this confused Gyarados as I go for a headbutt and a body slam. And both of those combined will be enough to take it out. So Dennis and Maya are defeated, and we can move on, pick up these berries. There's a Wiki Berry, which I believe is... I can't remember what it does. It's either a Poffin Berry or it's one of those berries that uh, heals HP but causes confusion. So let's see what the sign says. And I was right in that we have reached our new area. In going through this gate, we have reached Veilstone City. So that's where I'm going to end it off here. Perfect. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Like and favorite the video and leave a comment below. Go check out my main channel, Shiny Nature Zack, my Pokemon community channel, Poke Capital, and my TCG channel, SHD TCG. And before I forget, question of the day is, uh, let's see, who do you like better between my uh, two current HM slaves, Snail or Dot? It can be based on the nickname, it can be based on usefulness, it can be based on the Pokemon. Uh, just tell me which one you like better, Snail the Geodude or Dot the Budu, and I will try and tell y'all what the results were in my next part. So until then guys, I will see you later.